Hello! We are today making a spaghetti squash arrabbiata. So here's a picture. You see the spaghetti squash in the bowl and it's got sort of a red sauce and some fresh parsley. And this little picture here is nutty parm, which is a dairy-free alternative to Parmesan that includes nutritional yeast and various kinds of nuts and spices. So this comes from the cookbook, How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Grieger. It's a whole plant, plant-based type cookbook. And um, he talks a lot in his How Not to Die book about the healing properties of food. So this is a cookbook to kind of supplement that. So I have spaghetti squash going in the oven right now and I have separate videos for how to get into those spaghetti squash, which is a very entertaining video, as well as how to uh, create that spaghetti-esque look. So I'll link those to this video. Right now we're gonna make the sauce. So I'm just gonna back you up a little bit. I have a Dutch oven, though his recipe calls for a skillet, and I'm always making double batches. So I have some pre-peeled garlic here, which I also have a video for how to do that. And my mother got me a new garlic press for Christmas, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. So I have a quarter cup of water in this pot that's been warming in order to cook my garlic. And in these whole plant, plant-based cookbooks, instead of oil, which you would normally see, um, we're using water to saute our veggies. And I have become such a fan of this over the last few months. I started with it over the summer. I was a total skeptic. Um, I still have used oil for my holiday meals and things like that, but I have just found for so many of the meals that we make, whether you fried it in oil, which added all kinds of things to your diet you may not want, or you sauteed it in water, you kind of got a really great flavor either way. There was no... There was no really like compromise for me in the experience of my meals. So I've become such a fan of this. And this is a great garlic press. I am so enjoying it. So I, I, the recipe called for three cloves of garlic. I have six and probably actually seven because I love garlic. What can I say? So I'm just going to go over here and give this a quick rinse before I move on. And garlic cooks really fast. So there's no real need to spend a lot of time waiting on that garlic. So I usually take like, this is a silicone spatula. I'm just gonna move that around as quickly as possible. It's again, not gonna take a lot of time. It's just softening a little bit. And then the rest of our ingredients go in. So the recipe calls for three cups of fresh, finely diced tomatoes. I'm taking a bit of a modification here. I've got some canned tomatoes and they're diced however the canned people diced them. Uh, I have roughly six cups, it's a little more than that, but I have a lot of spaghetti squash, so I feel confident. And this is largely just a really big tomato-based experience here. So it's a lot of tomato. So I'm just gonna give those a turn with that garlic, which is gonna make your kitchen smell so aromatic. You're just gonna love the smell going on in your kitchen. Okay, from there is a teaspoon of balsamic. So you're putting in a wee bit of sort of a sweet tart. And I have two sets of teaspoons and tablespoons out, one for wet ingredients and one for my dry. This streamlines my experience. This bottle's almost gone. So that goes in, followed by a teaspoon of miso paste. So I'm going to go ahead and do two teaspoons of that because I have a double batch going. I also need two tablespoons of tomato paste. So I have found that one can like this, one small can, equals six tablespoons, probably heaping. So I'm going to go ahead and spoon out this whole thing because... I'm okay with that extra couple of tablespoons being in there, and I hate saving tomato paste. It's like the bane of my existence. And with tomato paste, because it's a little thick, you kind of have to smush it down onto the bottom of the pan. So give that a good smush. Smush is a great word, isn't it? Also, you got that miso paste you need to smush as well. And as they get warm, they're easier to smush. 
This is a pretty fast meal. I could probably do it even faster, but you and I are chatting, so that's how it goes. Um, because your spaghetti squash is going to bake, and you're not going to do anything with it, right? And then there's so much dumping here. I actually am going to serve this with a salad, so I'll also cut up a little bit of lettuce. But not challenging at all. So I've got, I think, a little more miso paste that's going. So once that's all incorporated, it's a teaspoon of dried basil. So I'm going to do two. And of course, you can always use fresh. So dried herbs are more concentrated. So you might want to have two tablespoons or a quarter cup of fresh basil to one teaspoon of dried. Um, red pepper flakes, I have cayenne pepper here, so I just give a couple shakes. That's gonna just give it a little bit of heat, nothing much. Uh, Dr. Grieger has his own spice blend at the front of his cookbook. Uh, it has all kinds of things. Garlic powder, onion powder, parsley, turmeric, so many things. It's kind of a salt substitute for him. I have found my family's not having it. They still want salt in their food. So I always add a little bit. Um, parsley, he calls for a quarter cup of fresh parsley. So I'm going to use two tablespoons of dried because I just didn't have it in me this week to also buy parsley. Um, and then black pepper. So I'm just going to give that a couple shakes and then move it all around. So this heats and that's your sauce. It's so easy, so quick, so fast. And it's really gonna be pretty too. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that's all incorporated. And then I'll basically just let it simmer for five minutes or so, so that the flavors blend. And this sauce, you can make it ahead of time, um, which I make all of my food ahead of time. Nothing is made in the moment because our family is so busy. So I always have meals prepped that can be heated quickly. I cook that way purposely. I think about what can be prepped and just heated for later. But that is the sauce. It's really beautiful. And again, you could do this in a skillet. You could do it with a skillet that has a cover on it. Um, I just happened to do it in this Dutch oven because we have it. So that is the sauce for that. Hopefully you will get a chance to try that because I think it's going to be super tasty. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.